Jessica with Chapter Checks, and today I am here to do our Rainbow Read segment. This is a segment that we haven't done in a while. We always say we're going to do it twice a year. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We didn't get to do it for the first part of the year, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it for the second part of the year. What it is, is we take every single color of the rainbow, and we pick a book that has the corresponding color on its cover. And these are books that are going to be released from July to December of 2015, so the second half of the year. And it's just, if it's red, it's turn, then we'll pick a book that has red on the cover. And it doesn't have to necessarily be the dominating cover. It's just a new and interesting way to bring new releases to your attention. Normally, Stacy does this with me, but since she's still on her Chapter Chicks hiatus, I thought I would just go ahead and do it without her. I have everything on my computer, and that's why I might be looking down more than I mean to. Um, the first book that I want to talk about for Red is Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes. This is the companion book to Percy Jackson and the Olympians. It has a bunch of awesome pictures and storylines and things behind it. So, like with a lot of big series, there are companion books. Um, I can think of several that have them. The Shadow Hunters Codex for the Mortal Instruments, the Fledgling's Handbook for the House of Night series, the Twilight movie guide and handbook, um, but there are a lot, it's a big popular thing to do companion books. So this is the Percy Jackson one, finally, to celebrate the 10 year anniversary. This comes out on August 18th. Obviously orange is our next color, and the book that I've chosen for orange is The Dead House by Don Kurtigich. I know I'm not probably saying any of these names right, just a disclaimer ahead of time, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, this is kind of a horror story, which it's good to kind of have on your radar. It comes out August 6th of 2015, and it's kind of a good thing to have on your radar to get on your to-buy list, and maybe it'll be a fun read for Halloween. It is about a... It's, it's written kind of like some of the other books that have the transcripts and documents and other things. I don't know if it's purely those things or if it's they're kind of written through them, but like diary entries, interviews, those kind of things. And it's a diary that is found on the premises of a an old school disaster. 25 years ago, a high school had burned down, three people were killed, and one girl was went missing. The diary belongs to the missing girl's twin, but the twist here is that nobody knew that she had a twin. So how does that play out? I don't know. It definitely looks like it will be a fun Halloween read, so I thought that it should be on your radar. The book I have chosen for yellow is Menagerie by Rachel Vincent. Rachel Vincent actually wrote another popular young adult series that I haven't read, but it is apparently pretty good. So this book is about a girl who visits a carnival. The, the main character finds out that she is not normal and joins the carnival and discovers there's a whole system of entrapment and different creatures like mermaids and what are the, um, minotaurs and griffins and kelpies. and they are all trapped in this carnival, and the story is kind of them trying to find their freedom. But that sounded pretty good. I like a book. This has, like, anything that is a twist on mermaids I'm interested in, so maybe this has something really cool. The next book that I've chosen is for the color green, and it is Paperweight by, by Meg Hassan. It is a contemporary novel about a girl who is committed due to an eating disorder. She is committed for 60 days but she plans on killing herself on the anniversary of her brother's death. Um, I really, I've really been into contemporary reads lately, and I know a lot of um, you guys that have been watching and commenting have been saying how you are too on a contemporary bandwagon. Um, this comes out, this already came out, it came out July 7th, on, and, but I counted it because even though I'm filming this at the end of the July, it's still the second half of the month. So. But this book, it just sounds really good. I've been really into contemporary novels, and the tagline is really what hit me on it. It says, Why are some consumed by their illness while well, by their illnesses while others embark on a path toward recovery? And that is just such a great question. I would love to see the journey that the main character goes on. Her name is Stevie, I think. Yeah, Stevie. And I'm just really looking forward to reading this book, and I hope that you guys might find some interest in it too. Um, obviously, this probably has some serious triggers, so definitely check it out if you're someone who suffers. Check it out before buying it and reading it if you're someone who suffers from that. On the contemporary train, just riding along, I have also chosen Carry On by Rainbow Rowell for Blue. This is going to be released October 6th, and 
I think everyone is kind of looking forward to the next Rainbow Row book. Um, she has pretty much just been a winner all across the YA and adult book world. And even more so, this is a little twist. Um, I think all of us wanted to hear more from Simon and Baz when we read Fangirl, and this is the story of Simon and Baz. So that's awesome. I love authors who do stuff like this and will have no shame in going back and revisiting the worlds that they've already created. Um, I can't wait to read this. October cannot come fast enough. I still have Landline and Attachments. No, I have Landline and Eleanor and Park to read from Rainbow Row, but Attachments and Fangirl I read and love. So I can't wait to read this next book by her. For Indigo, I have chosen what is this? Reawakened by Colleen Hoek. Hoek? I don't know how to say the name. I'm sorry. But this looks, it's kind of a, well, I feel like it's more for the cheesy YA lovers than it is for people who are really into the deep, dark confines of, like, high fantasy and contemporary. Um, I feel like this is kind of just a breath of fresh air from the other choices that I picked, but it still has definitely some fantasy and some typical YA things going on. It is about a girl, she visits the museum, and when she goes into the museum, she finds out that one of the mummies has come alive, and the apocalypse, apocalypse is a Bruin, and they have to go stop the mummy's brothers in order to save the world. Sure, they fall in love, I don't know that for sure, but I am sure they do. And it's probably going to be really cute, really fun, and I have not read a mummy book yet, so I had to put it on the list. So for Violet, I have chosen This Raging Light by Estelle Laura or Lori, Lori, Estelle Lori, maybe? Um, this seems like it's going to be another contemporary book. It's about a young girl, her, she's struggling um, being alone. She has bills to pay, little sister, her mom left, her dad went crazy, and then she falls in love with her best friend's brother. And that's what this is about. But at the same time, it seemed like it was a contemporary novel that was not about self-harm and not about disorders, eating disorders and things like that. And I've been reading a lot of contemporary novels that have those themes, and I thought this would be interesting to kind of see contemporary going down a different path. This Raging Light comes out in December. Now that I am done with the rainbow, I also usually do light and dark and gold and silver, just because there are too many awesome books coming out to limit it to the seven colors of the rainbow. For light, I have chosen Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls by Lynn Wayngarten. And this is kind of pitched as Gone Girl Meets 13 Reasons Why. Um, I loved 13 Reasons Why. It was probably my first contemporary book that I've read that I can remember since I've gotten on the YA bandwagon, and 13 Reasons Why was one of my favorite books. Gone Girl is totally awesome and amazing, and something that kind of has those two worlds meet sounds really good to me. Plus the cover is gorgeous, I would buy this just for the cover alone. Basically it's just about a girl who goes on a mission to solve her best friend's murder with her best friend's boyfriend. I'd, it's, it's a very short description, and normally when the descriptions are that short, the book is so amazing somehow. And that has already come out in July. For Dark, I have chosen Six of Crows. This is by Lee Bardugo, and this comes out September 29th. This book kind of reminds me of White Cat without the caster abilities. It's about a heist that the main character is assigned on, but he can't do it alone. He has five other people he has to complete the heist with. Um, it says, um, a convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk, to walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart render using her magic to survive the slums, and a thief with, an unlikely, uh, with a gift for unlikely escapes. Um, they're all outcasts, they're all trying to do this heist together, and it just seemed kind of like a fun read that could appeal to both girls and boys, and it's just something, the cover's really pretty, and I'm just really going to read it, I'm kind of just for Silver, I have chosen Dream Strider. This is by Lindsay Smith, and it is going to be released October 6th. This is about a girl who can, she's a dreamwalker, and when people are sleeping and dreaming, she can inhabit their body, possess their body, and walk around in their skin, and she uses this ability to spy. And that's all I really want to say about the novel. It, it kind of, I'm a little confused about it. Her partner kind of distances himself, and there is basically this pool of a nightmare that can corrupt 
the Dreamwalker, and that's all I really know about it, but it sounds really good, the cover's really unique, and I just feel like I'm definitely going to check it out when it comes out. So I thought I'd put it on there for silver. So for gold, I have chosen Ink and Bone by Rachel King. This comes out, already came out on July 7th, and this is basically about a controlled library. Um, people are not allowed to own personal books, they can only check out books from a government approved library, and it's basically just kind of the battle between the rebel people, obviously, who want to own their own books and have their own books in hiding and have their own libraries in hiding. I would not survive in this world. I would be murdered immediately for my <laughs> private collection of books, but I just think that this was a really interesting concept. It's talking about how the great library of Alexander has survived and is thriving amongst all the governments. And it's a very scary thing to think about because books in some countries and even in our country are banned and misdirected and controlled by the government. And it is just one of the many ways that the government does control you. And just imagine if they had every, they had, they could, they controlled all of it. Imagine if you could not have your own personal books at all. And it's a really scary concept. And I thought that it would be really interesting to read about. That is my Rainbow Reads. This is some pretty interesting books that will be coming out in the second half of 2015. Let me know if you guys plan on reading any of them, or if you've already read some of the ones that came out in July. And let me know also what you guys are looking forward to this second half of the year. Um, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye!